Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. I'd like to do a book review. Um, it is the 12th of February and the book review today is going to be on the Companion Bible. Now the Companion Bible is um, a copy of the New Testament with notes written in the main by E.W. Bullinger and uh, this is the study Bible which I have constantly at my side at all times. Now some of you may be saying well who's Bullinger? Well Bullinger was Ethelbert William Bullinger who was born on the 15th of December in 1837 and died on the 6th of June in 1913 and he was an Anglican clergyman he was a Church of England man he was a biblical scholar so he was totally um, familiar with both Hebrew and Greek and uh, many other languages and he is often referred to as ultra dispensationalist an ultra dispensationalist theologian I would beg to differ about that I don't think that he is ultra dispensationalist I think that here we have a man of God who quite is outstanding in his day um, and he taught um, the scriptures from end to end in very very great detail so let's think more about him he was born in Canterbury in England in Kent the youngest of five children of William and Mary Bent Bullinger. His family traced their ancestry back to Heinrich Bullinger, the Swiss reformer. So we have two famous men uh, called Bullingers. Uh, we have um, E.W. Bullinger and then we have the famous Swiss reformer Heinrich Bullinger. His formal theological training was at King's College London from 1861 to 18, sorry, 1860 to 1861, earning an associate's degree. After graduation on October the 15th in 1861, he married Emma Dobson, 13 years his senior. He later received a Doctor of Divinity degree in 1881 from Archibald Campbell, Tate, Archbishop of Canterbury, who cited, cited Bullinger's eminent service in the church and in the department of biblical criticism. Now this means that he was very, very um, well appreciated and understood. Now, Bullinger's career in the Church of England spanned from 1861 to 1888. He began as associate curate in the parish of St Mary Magdalene, Bermondsey, in 1861 and was ordained as a priest in the Church of England in 1862. He served as a parish curate at Tittleshall from 1861 to 1866 and Notting Hill from 1866 to 1869, from Laystone, 1869 to 1870, and then Walmanstow until he became vicar of the newly established parish of St. Stephen's in 1871. He, he resigned his vicarage in 1888. In the spring of 1867, Bullinger became clerical secretary of the Trinitarian Bible Society, a position that he would hold until his death in 18, sorry, in 1913. Bullinger was editor of a monthly journal called Things to Come, subtitled A Journal of Biblical Literature, with special reference to prophetic truth the official organ of prophetic conferences for over 20 years from 1894 to 1915 and he contributed many articles so that's Bullinger now what about the companion Bible well we follow the tradition of um, referring to the preface of each of the books that we review and for the companion Bible there is a preface that was written by Bullinger himself he says the Companion Bible is a new edition of the English Bible published originally in six parts and is now presented in one volume with the description which follows that the work is a self-explanatory Bible designed for general use for all English readers throughout the world. 
It has an amount of information which is um, hitherto inaccessible to the ordinary English reader. It is wide margins not to be found in any other edition of the AV. Its position in this respect is unique. So what he means by that is that in the text itself we may have the text but we then have a large wide margin full of notes upon the text um, going verse by verse explaining words uh, giving references and I have to say that when I'm reading the scriptures and looking for a particular um, point of scripture I almost invariably turn first to Bullinger who never lets me down I always seem to find what I'm looking for in the text so it's almost like as if he's thought about it ahead of me and has something there for me now its size and weight and type of paper as well as its price will compare favorably with all existing editions of the Bible. Now it's called the Companion Bible because the wide margin is intended to be a companion to the text and the whole of it is designed as the companion of all readers uh, of the Bible. So if you're a reader of the Bible having this at your side it's like having a friend, it's like having someone with expert biblical knowledge that you can just refer to at any time. The human element is excluded as far as possible. Now that's a very important point. So that the reader may realize that the pervading objective of the book is not merely to enable him to interpret the Bible, but to make the Bible itself to be the interpreter of God's word and will to him. So this isn't a commentary. This is a reference book. And um, what the author's done is to be very careful to try to remove as much of his thinking as possible to enable us to be able to read the Bible text for itself. Now, <clears throat> to the same end, the Bible is not associated specifically with the name of any man, man so that its usefulness may, may, may neither be influenced or limited by any such consideration, but that it may commend itself in its own merits to the ink whole of the English-speaking race. So, so although we know that it was produced by Bullinger, it doesn't have his name at the beginning. Um, it's not Bullinger's Bible. It is actually just the Companion Bible. Now it's not a new translation and it's not an amended translation and it is not a commentary. So what we have here is a um, we have a, a version of the Bible that has been constructed in such a way that we have all of the texts and the notes of scripture that we really need. Now the text that's used is the um, authorized version of 1611 as published by the revivers, revisers of the parallel Bible in 1885. There are no alterations in the text beyond what can be affected by a variation in the character of the type. So sometimes there is um, bold, sometimes there is capitals, Sometimes there is italics, but apart from that, the actual text of Scripture remains exactly the same. All ancient readings and new and amended renderings are confirmed in the margin, and for this purpose it extends to one half the width of the page. There is no minute English or Greek superior letters to confuse the text or to perplex the reader when searching for the corresponding number or letter in the margin. So what, what Bollinger has been very careful to do is to keep virtually all of his references to be in plain English. Now that's very good. It enables the ordinary English reader to be able to refer to the scriptures and to understand what it means in plain language. Now all there are various types employed in the text so these distinguish all the divine names. All the pronouns used for the above have their initials indicated by capital letters. The pronouns emphasized in the original are in a special type. 
Attentions given to the capital and small letters in other cases where they affect the interpretation. The words spoken or cited are placed within quotation marks. Where the Hebrew text is written in separate lines, these lines are preserved by being presented in the same way as the, in, in this present edition. Now, in the book of Psalms, the titles which will be printed so as to represent the superscriptions and the subscriptions are brought to light and demonstrated by Dr. J.W. Thurstall. Um, in the New Testament, all quotations from the Old Testament will also be specially indicated, and proper names with their pronouns are included in a special index, which is index appendix rather number 52. The chapters and verses of the authorized version are retained, but spaces are included to mark them off into paragraphs, so that the advantages of both verses and paragraphs are retained. These paragraphs are not divided according to the usual paragraph Bibles, but according to the structures which are given in the right-hand margin, while the corresponding index letters are repeated on the left-hand margin by the side of the text with the number of the page where they may be found, so that the student, subjects of the various paragraphs, may be seen at a glance and intelligently followed. Now that sounds a little bit complicated, <laughs> but don't worry. Once you see it, you will immediately uh, it'll immediately become apparent. You see, at the beginning of every at the beginning of every paragraph, there's usually a small diagram of what the paragraph is about, and often the diagram is in the form of um, sets of uh, phrases with a number of the verses. Um, and that gives you a pictorial diagram of how the passage is set out. Now, I believe that this is one of the key features of the Companion Bible. I think it's unique to the Companion Bible, and I think that it is um, perhaps one of the greatest features of this uh, Bible. Now, <clears throat> there's a lot of other things, and I could go on and on about them. There, there, there's a lot of things in this particular um, Bible which are um, things that I could talk about. There's just hundreds and hundreds of them. Um, however, I don't want to confuse the review, the, 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 book, the book review. just want to say how much this book is completely outstanding. Um, let me go on right the way down through the thing now now we, we also have marginal notes now in the old testament uh, all the in the old testament all the important readings are given according to dr c d ginsburg's mesoretico critical text of the hebrew bible so when you're in the old testament you will have all of the important various readings that can be given. So for example, if in the text there's various ways in which things are able to be said, you will find that those references are in the are in the are in the, are in the margin. In the New Testament, all the important variations of readings are also given according to the evidence of the great textual critics. So you've got a Grace Batch, Lachman, Tischendorf, Trigelis, Alfred Westcott and Hort and the Revisers Greek text. So all of those important readings are actually given in the margin. There are no words in Hebrew or Greek characters to burden or to hinder the English reader, but a complete system of transliteration generally adopted by Oriental scholars will enable him readily to pull back on all such words into the original characters with ease and accuracy. The Hebrew words are given not in the inflection found in the text, but in the root form in which they are looked for in lexicons. If you're used, if you're used to using a Hebrew lexicon or a Greek lexicon, then you will find the references easy to be found. Um, all important amendments are given, whether required by the above reading or the demanded for the sake of uniformity of translation or whether current renderings are inadequate or open to amendment, not otherwise or merely for the sake of giving an alternative.
Now the facts and phenomenon treasured up in the Messerah are for the first time presented in connection with the authorized version. All figures of speech are noted and their bearing on interpretation. These are the Holy Spirit's own markings calling attention to what is emphatic and worthy of our deepest attention. The spiritual significance of numbers is pointed out. The principal synonyms of words in the original are distinguished, especially those bearing on sin, atonement um, and psychology. The first occurrences of important words and expressions are duly noted. You see, there is a, there is a thing called the law of first mention. And in the scriptures, when something's mentioned for the first time, that's always a very significant event and so these are these are noted and the most recent archaeological discoveries in Assyria and Egypt are included eastern manners and customs are explained as they throw light on scripture the meanings of proper names and persons or places are given where these are suggestive money coins weights and measures are referred to in every case in appendix 51 chronology is dealt with on biblical lines which proceed on durations rather than dates. These are adhered to as given in the Bible itself and not adapted or made to conform to any other system. This transforms a dry study into a subject of the deepest interest. And the various charts and tables which are given in Appendix 50 are incredibly um, incredibly useful incredibly useful now the structures of books are given and all their parts which is the surest guide to their interpretation and the strongest proof of inspiration now although the structures of books are given um, this is not an interpretation it's only something which leads to interpretation the marginal notes do not record every possible reading or emendation as these would only load the pages with masses of needless matter only those new readings and renderings are given which will remove difficulties from the text and enlighten the eyes and inform the mind and affect the conscience and instruct the head and influence the life fascinating isn't it now several of the above points are for the first time placed within the reach of the ordinary English reader now as to structures um, <laughs> referenced on the previous page the companion Bible is a unique edition in relation to its structures they give not only a mere analysis evolved from the text by human ingenuity but a symmetrical exhibition of the word itself which may be discerned by the humblest reader of the sacred text and seen to be one of the most important evidences of the divine inspiration of its words now from these structures constitute a remarkable phenomena peculiar to divine revelation and are not found outside of it in any other form of known literature so these structures of scripture are absolutely essential for us to understand and that's the distinguishing feature of this companion bible now one would only have to get her hold of a copy of the companion bible to immediately see the structures that are there um, so for example if we were taking a look or just opened it to a page if we're taking a look at matthew chapter 1 sorry Matthew chapter 5 verse 1 to 7 verse 20, uh, 20 is that 20 22 we would immediately see there is a structure to the passage it is um, an introversion where the first point of the passage relates to the last point and the second point relates to the second to last point and so on so this is an introversion and uh, Bollinger has explained that this is an introversion when you look at the next part which is chapter 5 verse 3 to 3 to 12 we see again that it is another structure another introversion now these these structures are actually what I consider to be one of the greatest benefits that this edition of the Bible has now we also have appendices now the appendices um, are a very large part of the Bible they are um, 
let's just find the beginning of it. So beginning at the end of Revelation we have um, okay so now we have the appendices to the companion Bible and these appendices they constitute a very large part of reference material at the end of the um, at the end of the um, the Bible itself there are 198 appendices um, for this companion Bible and I could go through and read some of them for you they are, they are very detailed extremely important something that every English reader of the Bible could could become familiar with they contain a large amount of information bearing on the various questions raised by all of the phenomena of sacred text um, there are also explanations references in in the book there is um, uh, superior figures in the text are always presented we also have the transliteration of Hebrew words now um, for the first time in an English Bible um, words were translated from the Hebrew into an English equivalent and we get they listed all the examples of that um, we also have lots of abbreviations so these abbreviations um, are consistently used throughout the whole of the Old and the New Testament. Most of the abbreviations that are mentioned are things that we already know about, like NT means New Testament, OT means Old Testament, part means participle, pent means Pentateuch. So, what the um, um, so so Bollinger has put in these uh, abbreviations to minimise the multiplicity of letters in the whole so then is this something I use every day it is I use it every single day it's open on my desk virtually all the time and if it isn't open on my desk it's right at my side and it is referred to pretty well every day there are certain aspects of this companion Bible which in themselves are worth the money um, his, his analysis of John's Gospel is absolutely, absolutely priceless and enables us to understand um, how John's Gospel has been put together under divine guidance. So, so, so there we are. This is something I absolutely heartily commend. Now, the fact that this was um, edited and supervised by Bullinger does not mean at all that we automatically accept everything that Bullinger ever taught. That would be not not able to be substantiated. Nobody does that with any other book or any other person. So there may there may be things that Bollinger taught in other books which I would be not necessarily concurring with, but that doesn't mean and that doesn't detract from what he's produced in this companion Bible. So I heartily commend it to you. I think that every serious student of Scripture should have a copy of the companion Bible. I'll put it back on its shelf right at my side and uh, I wish you all the best have a wonderful day and if you're able to get hold of a companion Bible try to get hold of a good one try to get hold of one that's a smaller version uh, don't go for the abbreviated versions don't go for those just go for the ordinary plain um, companion Bible. Well, I wish you every blessing and look forward to speaking to you with another book review next week. Bye for now.